I've never even been in the cockpit of a plane, let alone that of a Cessna 172. I don't know what the buttons do, what all the switches do, the levers, the pulleys, but I'm about to get a crash course in flying. Maybe that should be intense course. I'd secured the once-in-a-lifetime chance to experience the thrill of a professional flight simulator. Wow. This replica Boeing 737-800NG, which is used to train commercial pilots, costs £10 million to make. And First Officer Ben Bonus had agreed to show me the ropes. So, Ben, as simulators go, this is about as real as it gets, right? Well, this is as close to real life uh, as you'll get. The UK Civil Aviation Authority have deemed it so realistic that this is what's used for training professional pilots. Wow. Should we give it a go, then? Let's go for it. Ben lifted the simulator's drawbridge, ran through the plane's pre-flight checks, then engaged the thrust levers. We were off. Oh, this thing's so real. The cockpit's controls are all linked to a clever computer system. Oh, my yeah. word. Yeah. With the pilot's view produced by three liquid crystal on silicon projectors. <laughs> OK, there's a 1,000 feet. Already? And there's a six-point pneumatic motion system driven by compressed air that ensures realistic in-flight movements. Back in the Boeing 737 simulator... Oh, things are happening. I'd now taken over the reins, becoming Captain Dealey. Oh, we're up! Yeah! But the enormity of the task quickly became evident. It really feels like I'm wrestling with it rather than controlling it. Monitoring the orientation, height and speed of the aircraft was proving difficult. Uh-oh. Flight slow. No. Flight slow. Oh, we're losing. What, what's happening? I'd become a jittery mess as I began to make my ill-judged descent towards the runway. Oh, oh, oh we're, we're nearly there! Am I approaching right? Oh. Am I going too fast? What's my speed? 134. Is that all right? Why is the nose going up? Ah! And all too soon... We hit the ground. Oh, blimey, I thought we'd la Good Lord! So, I thought we'd actually landed, but we hadn't done. <laughs> In fact, all I'd managed to do was crash tail first into the virtual tarmac. But I now have more of an idea of how difficult um, this challenge is going to be. And I'm worried about Meanwhile, it. to kickstart my pilot training, I'd ordered a copy of the popular flight simulator game, X-Plane. It's the most sophisticated and realistic flight simulator out there. And, most importantly, I can fly the Cessna 172. And to run it, I'd be using a custom-built Cobalt computer with a quad-core processor and three 20-inch high-speed monitors. But my tech didn't end there. I also had a range of USB flight control peripherals for added realism. Yeah. But before tackling my first virtual flight, I called in qualified pilot and Cessna 172 instructor, Sue Thorne. Firstly, she explained the plane's characteristics and control mechanisms. OK, and so begins the confusion. Then Sue gave me a flight circuit diagram showing the speeds. You're going to accelerate to 55 knots. Altitudes. Only 15 degree angle of bank in a climbing turn. OK. And engine RPM values I'd have to memorise to pass my challenge. I've got to have that all in my head, in the right order, to complete this challenge successfully. Piece Every spare minute I had was spent in the virtual skies. I know it's probably not advisable to fly whilst very tired, um, but I really need to get the hours in because I don't want to fail. It's really tough going. Because I'm concentrating so intensely on what I'm doing, I can't relax. If I can't relax, I can't enjoy it. I was plagued by dodgy takeoffs, dangerous descents, and horrific crash landings. If I can't nail my landing, I don't really want to think about it. I'd soon made X-Plane my life, playing the iPad version on the move and getting a feel for the Cessna's actual cockpit controls using this life-size USB gaming peripheral that mirrors the real thing. Yeah! Woo! Gradually, I began to improve, and it felt good. Check me out, flying. Beautiful. I'd seemingly nailed the takeoff and the circuit flying. Fantastic. Thank you. But try as I might, the all-important safe landing still eluded me. <laughs> Our eight weeks were up. Eight weeks ago, I embarked upon the toughest challenge of my life. 
I want to be a pilot, man. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every day since, I trained hard using the flight simulator game X-Plane. But the time had finally come to swap my virtual Cessna 172 cockpit for the real thing. So I've been up all night cramming, trying to learn as much as I can in the, you know, before the 11th hour. Um, I haven't picked a great day for it. In fact, by the time I'd reached the White Waltham airfield in Maidenhead, it was like a ghost town. As thick cloud and persistent rain had scared away even the most confident of flyers. However, there was one person on site that I was really glad to see. My co-pilot, Sue Thorne. How have you been getting on? Uh, not too badly. I I'm eager to get up there now. I feel I've done as many hours as I can stand on the simulator. It looks real, but it doesn't feel real. So I just want to get up in an aircraft and, and experience it. But considering the current weather conditions, that wasn't going to happen anytime soon. The reason that we can't go flying at the moment, we've got this cold front sitting over us here. Uh -huh. and that's producing all this low cloud, drizzle, poor visibility, which is hanging around. With my challenge seemingly hanging in the balance, all I could do was while away the time playing X-Plane on my iPad and frantically swatting up on some theory. It's a good job I got nerves of steel. All this waiting around, otherwise would be really nerve-wracking. But just as I was about to give up hope, my luck changed. The rain stopped, the clouds parted, and the sun began to shine. Time to go. With an all-too-real Cessna waiting for me, I now had to put my hours of X-plane training into practice. I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm nervous because this is a challenge and I want to I wanna pass the test, you know? And having climbed into the real cockpit for the first time, the scale of the challenge finally dawned on me. I'm not playing a game anymore. I am about to take off, do a circuit, and land a real plane. There was no going back. Sue joined me in the rather snug Cessna cockpit, fired up the engine, then began taxiing towards the runway. Everything was now feeling very real, and my nerves were jangling. Are you happy? Uh, generally in life, yes. <laughs> uh, about my current situation, I can't say I'm ecstatic, but, you know, let's, let's, let's do it. Sue then received the go-ahead from the airfield's control tower. Go see the light, ready for departure, lining up runway 25. My big moment had arrived. It's all over to you. OK. You have control. I have control. To pass my challenge, I had to take off, navigate a rectangular flight circuit, then land the plane without any help from Sue. So I'm pushing in the throttle, and I'm trying to keep her straight. With the throttle fully in, our speed rose sharply, and at 55 knots, I pulled back on the steering column. Woo! Woo, I'm taking off! This is me taking off! But in the excitement, I'd forgotten something. Forgot my reference point. So with no visual marker on the horizon to aim at, I began to drift off course slightly. OK, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna panic about it right now. OK, so I'm, I'm climbing, I'm climbing. After a steady rate of climb to 500 feet, it was now time to make my first left turn. So doing a 15 degree turn now. Again, I forgot to get a reference point. 800 feet, so I want to ease off a bit on that now. Now at a height of 800 feet and a speed of 90 knots, it was time for a second left turn, taking me onto the back straight of the circuit. OK, so uh, I am now parallel with my runway. I want to ease back a bit now to about 2,000 revs. Halfway through the circuit and satisfied with my cruising speed, I began to peer out the window to check my position. OK, now I'm looking for... What am I looking for? But having lost eye contact with my instrumentation, I'd accidentally pitched the nose up, causing the plane to veer upwards. Woohoo! Lapse concentration there. Crisis averted, it was time to employ the first of three flap stages. These provide increased drag to help slow down the plane. So now I want to turn in. So this is a 30 degree angle of bank now. Uh, until I'm perpendicular with the runway. I was now on the base leg of the circuit and my brain was working overtime. Uh, second stage of flaps going in and I really do want to bring the speed back. 
Having descended to an altitude of 500 feet and dropped to a speed of 70 knots, I performed the final 30 degree bank turn. Okay, so I'm lined up with the runway now, ish. With the final stage of flap set, the wings were fully hinged, allowing me to descend steeper and slower as my altitude dropped. Ease off a bit more. It was now or never. I had to land the plane. Oh. I closed down the throttle, then pulled back on the steering column, praying I'd timed it right. Oh. <laughs> I did it! Oh my god! Oh my god, I just landed a plane! That was the, one of the scariest things of all right, no, sorry. Pull back a bit more. Break. Amazingly, the landing that had dogged me in training had somehow come good on the one time that it really mattered. That was one of the scariest experiences <laughs> of my life and the most exhilarating. I did it, I did it, and bless you, Sue, bless you so much. I could see Sue's hands hovering, <laughs> fighting the urge to, to take control, but you didn't. Thank it was you, thank really you. brilliant. Thank you so much for taking me through that. Oh, man. Woo, landed a plane. Yes! Oh my goodness, I did it!